Welcome to this latest uh, installment of Kitchen Conversations. Uh, instead of making a cake this time, I'm going to make cookies. Um, the other day, I was, went across the street to the thrift store across the street, and I bought two things. I bought a, this cookbook for $2, and I bought this little iron skillet for, I think, three fifty dollars maybe, uh, or 3 um, tried to make cornbread in it the other night. I'm still working on cornbread because I love my granddaddy's cornbread. I'm trying to figure out how he made it so good. So at some point I'm gonna make cornbread, but right now I'm gonna make my own recipe for cookies because I went to the back of this and there were a few cookie recipes that I read and I didn't really like any of them. So I baked enough now that I can sort of figure out what ingredients go with what ingredients um, in a scientific way, you want to put it, but, um, and now I can combine it with um, the artistic side of me that likes to conjure things. And, and it plus, as I said uh, last week, I think, if you bake something and you don't like it, one of the lessons I've learned from baking is you don't have to keep it, you don't have to eat it, you can throw it away. It's like being in a bad relationship. Break up with the mother. Just break up with him. Okay. Um, or make it work. Which is trying to find another way to add an ingredient or take out an ingredient that's in the recipe. So maybe uh, that's also the lesson. Don't give up. Maybe you're the ingredient in the recipe that um, needs to be tinkered with a bit. So here's the tinkering. Um, so these cookies, I made a batch last night and they were really good, really, really, really good. They're, they're pecan, cranberry, oatmeal, cracked pepper cookies. Uh, I know that last thing sounds a little weird. That was part of my conjuring thing. I was making them and I thought, no, this needs a little kick. This needs a little kick. Like when you're in a relationship and you think, these a little kick. So um, yeah, so you close the bedroom door and you find your cracked pepper. Um, so, I put this in the refrigerator last night. I'm assuming it will still be good today when I put this on the, on the cookie sheet. So, what I did, how I made this yesterday was, I'll put this recipe, um, I'll write it down so you can read it. I mixed together in a mixing bowl, one and a fourth cup flour, one half teaspoon baking soda, one half teaspoon salt, and then one half teaspoon either cinnamon or allspice. I wanted to use cinnamon. I didn't have any in my cabinet. I had some allspice. I used allspice, and I liked it, and I think I'm gonna keep it. Um, and then one half teaspoon of nutmeg. That all goes here. Then in my mixing bowl, I softened two sticks of butter. You can use unsalted or salted. I know that's a debate, like which do I use? Since I put a little salt in it, maybe you should use unsalted. I only had salted here. So I used two sticks of butter. I softened it a bit in the microwave and put it in the mixing bowl with one cup of granulated sugar and one half cup of brown sugar. And I used the paddle extension and I mixed that up till it was frothy, maybe about three or four minutes. And then I put two eggs in here and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And I mix that. And then I, like a third at a time, put the flour mixture in here. Mix that. Then I got two cups of oat, oatmeal, old fashioned oatmeal. Put that in here. One cup of cranberries. This, this is the cranberries I use. Um, I have a big bag of These are whole dried cranberries. I got a, um, a cup of that. And then for the pecans, I filled up this little iron skillet and just crushed them and like crushed them up a bit, ch chopped them up and put that in here and mixed that all in together. Uh, and then I put the cracked pepper in there and that was really good. I'm, I may put a little bit more in here, although my downstairs neighbor that I test these recipes on who love these cookies, love, love, love them. I just ran into him walking his dog 
um, about a few hours ago. He said how much he loved them, and he said, you know, she maybe try some cayenne pepper in there to give it even more of a kick. So I went out to the CBS and I bought some cayenne pepper. So for this batch, I'm gonna experiment. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm gonna put a little teeny tiny bit of cayenne pepper in here, and I might be sorry, but I'm gonna do it and see what happens. Oh, and now I've got a cat who is being very insistent. You're gonna find out just how insistent this cat can be. Her name's Maddie. No, Maddie, Maddie. No, no, no. And she's in one of her insistent moods. She looks so big on the screen. She is tiny cat. She's a tiny cat, but she manifests really big in images. That's you, Maddie. Um, so I'm gonna take this and mix in this cayenne and see what happens. Maddie, you better stay out of here. It'll make your nose burn, honey. And believe me, I know what it's like to have, have a nose burn from being a drug addict. Speaking of drug addicts, speaking of drug addicts, <laughs> I'll never segue. Um, when I was cooking these cookies last night, I started thinking of all the like who like who do I know named Cookie? My my editor at um, Vanity Fair, Wayne Lawson. I'm gonna put a little more black pepper in here because I like black venom. This is gonna really have a kick. Um, Wayne Lawson. He used to call me Cookie. Hi, Cookie. Hi. I read I read your story, Cookie. He was the only person who ever called me Cookie. Um, he ended up breaking my heart, really, but when I left Vanity Fair, but that's for another cooking show, or maybe my next memoir. I love Wayne. He was like, he was the closest thing I ever had to a priest in my life. Um, I really, loved, I always wanted to please him. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna get sentimental about Wayne. I also knew a cookie in my childhood named Cookie McCrory. She lived down the street. She was very sort of glamorous. She, she was like a, dark version of Carol Channing. I always thought of her as an aviator. Um, yeah, I had a crush on her daughter, Christiane. Uh, then she became like a born-again Christian cookie. And then the family did. Um, but I was fascinated by that family, especially Cookie. Cookie McCrory. I just loved her name, Cookie McCrory. Um, anyway, so you take this Get it out here. It's, these are really gonna have a kick. You preheat the oven to 350. You cook for 16 minutes. Not 15, not 17, 16. Anyway, the, um, I say anyway a lot. I gotta cut, cut that out. Um, Cookie. I just woke up from a nap, so I'm a little discombobulated here. The, the cookie. Ooh, that does have a kick. Ooh. <coughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. Um I really started thinking about Cookie Mueller or Muller yesterday. I assume that if you're watching this video. With, that's associated with me, you might know. No, no, honey, that's not you, that's not yours. Um, you might know who cook, who Cookie Mueller was. Um, okay, there you go. This is the way they looked yesterday. I have one left because I give shit away. I gave all these cookies away. So that's how they look. They're really good. Trust me, they're really good. <laughs> this cat. She my sous chef. You my sous chef. I'm gonna put this in for 16 minutes. And before I turn that off and come back to show you what they're like, um, I just wanna say a few words about Cookie Mueller. If you don't know her, she, um, she was part of John Waters' crowd. She was born in Maryland. Um, she was a force 
um, Gary in Indiana, who was a friend of hers, who loved her, as so many people did, um, said that she galvanized people. She electrified people. That's how she went, went through life. She was a drug addict, I think. I mean, she did drugs. I assume she was an addict. She was a drug dealer, that I know. Wait, wait a minute, this is what dark. Uh, she, she sold coke out of her East Village apartment. Um, she hitchhiked a lot. She was a, she was a hippie in the Haight-Ashbury. She was in Provincetown a lot. Look how beautiful. Maybe her spirit is now here with Maddie May. Um, hey, Maddie, I know you showed your name. Um, she was a writer. That's how I think of her mainly. As a, she was a presence in New York in the 80s, when I, uh, late 70s and the 80s when I first um, moved to New York. I moved to New York in 1975. Um, I was always intimidated by her because she was so cool. And um, and she took up a lot of air in the room. Um, and maybe I just felt competitive because I wanted to air. And plus she sort of scared me. It scared me back then. I wasn't an active drug addict or a recovering drug addict at that point. So the way she engaged in life sort of scared me. She's an art critic. She wrote a, like a health advice column um, down in the East Village, I think the East Village Eye for details. She was an art critic. She wrote some books. Um, um, uh, one was called uh, Fan Mail, Frank Letters, and Crank Calls. Uh, there's a great title of one called Walking Through Clear Water in a Pool Painted Black. I love that. I'm walking through clear water with a cat painted black. Um, yeah, she was, uh, she was an amazing person. I thought about her a lot when I was cooking yesterday, so I went and read a lot about her. Um, uh, you know, she was a John Waters first used in Pink Flamingos and Female Trouble. I think the title even for Female Trouble came from her because she had some problems with her health in Provincetown, and John went to visit her in the hospital and very worried about her because it was sort of serious. And she said, oh, honey, it's just female trouble. And that's for the title of that film Kiki came from, I think. I think that's true. Um, she, she sort of had a manifesto that said, um, to free the act of living from being an oppressive job, you have to change your perspective. You have to find the hidden humor in, sh in shit. Um, it's always hidden and buried, and you have to, it's a practice. That when life is becoming too oppressive, you have to just change the perspective. And I was having a discussion yesterday with an um, uh, ex monk. I don't think you're ever an ex if you've ever been a monk. He was a monk for 30 something years. Um, about the importance of narrative in our lives. I think that's what I was talking about. Reci in a way, I was talking about recipes. Um, The difference between, I sometimes I think the difference between mental crisis in one's life, mental illness, mental crisis, and getting on with your life is the way we choose to tell our life's narrative to ourselves, our own narrative. I write, excuse me, no, I write memoirs, and one of the reasons I write mem memoirs is to gain control of my narrative. Or I think I would have been in a loony band, as Cookie M Mueller was at one point. Um, I, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say Cookie's name. I wanted to remember her. I wanted to uh, acknowledge her. So many people are now gone. She died of AIDS in 1989, uh, a few weeks after her husband died of AIDS. She also had a very good living. She was a mother. Um, she was photographed by Peter Gujar and, and um, Nan Golden. She was a presence. A lot of people, I think, when, when she blazed through her life, uh, stood next to her flames and felt their own path lit by them, felt sins by her, Warmed by her, um, 
Anyway, I'm making cookies for Cookie today. So I was going to name them Cookie Mueller Cookie. And then I added the pepper. And I began to think of Angie Dickinson. I'm sorry, who else can like hold a black hat, make cookies, have a cooking show, and look at, look at, look at your little old man. <laughs> and um, talk about Cookie Mueller and, um, and Angie Dickinson. Uh, Angie Dickinson had, had a sort of mid-career, late mid-career success on a TV show called Police Story. And when I was putting my pepper and my Cookie Mueller cookies, I remember her name was Pepper. I don't think I've ever, I think there's a Pepper Schwartz, who's like a sociologist, a writer or something, she's a professor. I don't know how that name came out of my head. Um, but I've never known any Peppers, really. Uh, so I started thinking of Angie Dickinson. Um, I went looking for Angie Dickinson quotes. Uh, one of the quotes from her I love was, she has never knowingly dated a Republican. She said that, never knowingly. Um, and, <clears throat> and she also said that she never drinks wine in the day because the rest of the day is an apology. I love that too. And, she, and she's hard to imitate because she's not talented enough. I thought that was sort of sad in a way. Um, so anyway, I, see I said anyway again. Um, I'm naming these Angie Dickinson cookies because they got pepper in them. Okay? Look at this. Look at Maddie. I'm gonna bake, I'm gonna make something at some point called Maddie something or other. Maddie. What, what can we make, huh? What can we make, hmm? All right, uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes and I'll show you the cookies and I'll taste them. I may have to drink some water afterwards because they may burn the shit out of my mouth because they're gonna have some kick in them. <coughs> um, now, okay, so here's the, let me lift a, let me lift a, a bottle of cayenne pepper to Cookie McCrory, to Wayne Lawson, who called me Cookie, to Cookie Mueller, and to Angie Dickinson, who was named Pepper, and who used a police weapon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, I'll be back. Can you tell I just woke up? <laughs>